Okay, so in this video, um, I'm going to I'm going to actually solve for each of these situations right here. But really, what we're trying to focusing on is how you'd write a mathematical equation for each of these. So if if you're definitely following what I'm saying about how to write these each of these down as an equation, then you're on the right track. If you're feeling a little bit shaky in how I'm solving for these, that's okay. We'll get better at this as we go on. Um, but still, I'll try and explain in the clearest way possible. So in the first one, it says 7 times a number is 35. What is the number? Well, 7 times a number can be written as 7x. That means 7 times a number. And is 35 means equals 35, because is means equals. And to simplify this one, if 7 times something is 35, well then 35 divided by 7 gives you the missing number, which is 5. And here, that equals x. So in this case, x equals 5. And in the next problem, and again, if, if, if this is where you're getting shaky, which is how did I just solve that, think of inverse operations going backwards and forwards between multiplication and division, but also remember our goal right now is that you could set the equation up. If you can solve it, that's just a great bonus. So now it says 3 times the number plus 15 is 24. What is the number? Well, 3 times the number is 3x plus 15 is 24. Now, this time, same setup with, with is, it's equals, but now we have a little bit more to deal with. But this time I'm going to break it down two steps. I'm going to say if 3 times something plus 15 is 24, well then doesn't it make sense that 24 minus 15 would equal 3 times the missing number? Which is to say that, okay, if you took a number, multiplied it by 3, and then added 15 to get 24, if I'm going to work backwards, first I've got to subtract the 15 from 24, and, and that'll tell me what 3x was, and then I've got to figure out what x is next. Fortunately, 24 minus 15 is 9, and that's equal to 3x. So x has to be equal to 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. And there, I was just working backwards in two steps. Um, so in the next one, here it says twice a number, so let's write it down on the equation as we look at it. Twice a number, 2x, right, 2 times a number, is 3 less than 5 times another number. So 5y minus 3. And all I'm doing there is taking 3 away from 5 times a number. Don't be confused. Don't try and write 3 minus 5y. When you see um, it's 3 less than, that means minus 3, of course, because you're taking 3 away from your total you would see 3 minus 5 times another number if they wanted you to write 3 minus 5y. Now the other equation we have here is 3 times the second number, so that's y, so 3y, is 15. What are the numbers? Well first we can solve for y, right, because it says 3y equals 15. Well then 15 divided by 3 gives us y, and y is 5. Now, this is fun, we can use this and plug it into the first equation. Because now we know what this y is, and that'll tell us what x is. So what do we do? Well, 2x, it says, equals 5 times y, which is 5. So 5 times y is 25, minus 3. So that means that 2x equals 22. And, of course, dividing by 2 on both sides, because 2 times something gives you 22, we'll cut 22 in half by dividing by 2, and x is equal to 11. So in this case, x is 11, and y is 5. Moving on to part D. Now it says one number is, so x is 25 more than 2 times another number. Then it says if each number were multiplied by 5, so 5x, y, their sum would be 350. So 5 times x and oops, 5 times y would give you 350. What are the numbers? Okay, so in this one, and I'm a little bit stumped about this one because I know how to set this up, right? It says that that 5 times each number, like multiply each by 5 and add them up and you get 350. 
and we know that one number equals 25 more than twice another number, I know from instinct, of course, that x has to be bigger than y, because you plug some value in for y, double it, add 25, and you get x. But, but what's tough here is I'm not sure how to explain it to you with, without you having seen a little bit more algebra, but I will try. Um, here's what I would do. Well, I know there's a common factor between x and y here. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to use something called the factored form, which tells me 5 times x plus y still equals 350. And all I did there was pull this common factor out of both expressions. So instead of multiplying 5 by x and by y, we find the sum of x and y and then multiply it by 5. This is the same thing under the distributive property. But that being said, now what I see is 5 times something is 350. So using all the stuff we've been talking about so far, 350 divided by 5 has to equal that something, or the sum, which is x plus y. So x plus y now equals what? Well, what's 350 divided by 5? Well, that's 70, just like 35 divided by 5 is 7. And now we're getting somewhere. Next, we know that, that x equals 25 plus, plus 2y. So what do we do? Well, well, if we know x equals this stuff right here, we can plug that into this equation, which doesn't seem helpful at first, but what it does when we, when we re rewrite it, re -write it is to, to, ha to give us only one variable in the first equation, which is super useful. So now in the first equation, instead of x and y, I'm going to substitute or replace this x with this expression right here. So that means I'll get 70 equals 25 plus 2y, which I'm writing in place of this x, plus y. And now you can see, oh, now we only have one variable. We can combine these two. That makes 3y, right? Two y's and another y is 3y, plus 25 equals 70. Now I can solve for y. So 70 minus 25 is 